Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Um, we're going to go back to 1984 again. Uh, still got lots of stuff left in 1984, I think, to touch upon. Um, and so this time I'm going to do, this one's going to be a two-parter episode, um, because I don't know if I could talk for a full hour on uh, each individual subject. Um, because I guess I've come to grips that I'm not really a horror fan. Um, but we're going to talk about horror movies, specifically horror movies of 1984, and specifically a magazine. I love my magazines, and one of the magazines, of course, that always is on the shelf at Anywhere You Go, Fangora, or Fangoria, or Fangora, or I think it was Fangoria Magazine. Um, just like Starlog, just like Dragon Magazine, just like Wrestling Illustrated, it was one of those magazines that you would go to... Uh, you know, to sh kind of shock yourself, to kind of like you dared yourself to look at the magazine um, as a kid, you know, in the 80s. So, uh, you know, and there's so many times, I mean, I guess this also kind of dovetails into and other small phenomena that, of course, kids have lost on kids today. But if you remember this back in the day, remember just going to the video store just to look at the videotape cases? You weren't really going to necessarily rent anything. Or maybe you were, but you just you got like a thrill out of just looking at the uh, the videotape cases. Or this is pre-internet, um, and I remember you know we would go to say now playing a Rochester home video with my um, specifically my dad because he had the VCR in, in '84, and uh, we would go there and we would look at the videotapes. And then of course I remember telling my other friends. When I went back to my mom's house um, in the block. The, the, again, the, the one friend is the friend <laughs> whose dad uh, edited the Evil Dead movies uh, with um, with Bruce Campbell. So I, I told that that his son, I said, "Hey, you know, we can go. Let's go ride our bikes over to the the Rochester Home Video and just look at the cassette tapes. There's nudity on the back of some of them. Specifically, there was one. Uh, remember the? I think it was Doctor Heckle or Doctor Jekyll and Mister." Hi Jive, or that's no, a song. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I guess, was a comedy. Um, and then the, there, if you flip over the back of the thing, I don't have, I'm not going to pull it up because YouTube, of course, will flag me for it. But you pull back of that videotape, there's that scene where she's got the giant, they're fake, but those giant fake boobs, they're like way out to here. Um, you're like, oh my God, look at this. And you'd show your, you know, you show your other, and those kids were, I think they were two years younger than me. So in 84, I was 11. Um, so they were like nine. <laughs> so we used to do that. We'd ride our bikes to the video store just to look at the videotapes. So that's why so many of the videos, so many of the movie posters to me are so like just baked into my skull. And there's so many movie posters of movies that I wanted to watch. You know, obviously lots of movies with lots of TNA in it. Um, basically just based on the video, just on the poster on the cover of the videotape. Because I've watched a bunch of those movies, and they are not what they're cracked up to be. <laughs> um, maybe back then, but as I went go back and watch those movies now, oh my god, do they not hold up? Um, and a lot of horror movies don't hold up. So back to horror. Um, again, I'm not a huge horror fan. I guess I was then, because it was like I said, I was going through a tough childhood, and. Um, you know, I want, and I like to shock and awe people, and I like to, uh, and I like to do things, you know, that you're not supposed to do. <laughs> you know, I'm a typical young kid, and uh, things that appeal to me, you know, like, you know, killers and murderers and, and all the, in, in graphic violence and all that stuff, so, when the, you know, the cable guy would say graphic violence, specifically. Not just violence, graphic violence. It's like graphic nudity. <laughs> What's that mean? Um, anyways, uh, you know, I, 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 I kind of got off on this stuff. I mean, it kind of, it gave me an exhilaration. There's also the whole thing where you would, um, like I said, I had very little supervision. My dad, as long as there wasn't a lot of swearing in it, my dad didn't really care what I watched. Um, my sister seemed to be an enabler as far as watching movies and then get mad that I watched them afterwards. Oh, maybe you shouldn't have been watching them. <laughs> Why don't you want me to watch it in the first place? Um, because she wanted to watch it. Anyways, and there was, uh, there's also my mom, who just seemed to not care what the heck I was watching. Um, 
So I didn't have any super. I didn't have any restrictions really outside of not being able to get into the movie theater myself without parents buying the tickets. You know, if you're under 18 or whatever it was, or 17 or whatever. But um, uh, my restriction was I was scared to shit to go see some of these movies. Um, you know, I, it was like one of those things where I was like, you dared yourself. Like, oh, I don't know if I can watch this. I, I don't know if I want to see it. I, I, but I want to see it. It's like a train wreck, you know, or a car accident. You want to see it, but you don't want to see it. Um, and, uh, you know, I remember just that summer, you know, and into the fall of 1984, riding my bike to the video store, riding my bike up to the bookstore, you know, and just daring myself to open up a, the pages of Fangora magazine, you know, and just like, Oh my god, ah, ah. I remember, there's one specific movie, and I can't remember what it is. I think, well, let's see if we'll come through it. I'm going to go through some of the magazines. But there's one specific where the guy's just ripped off from the torso down, and he's just laying there. Um, and it's like a full two page like spread in the, the centerfold of the magazine. I saw that. I was just like, you know, I'm 11 years old. I'm just like, maybe I was younger. It could have came out before 84, but I think it was right around there. Um, I don't I can't remember what the name of the movie was. It's, it's funny, though, because if you think there's that scene in Aliens where Bishop gets ripped in half by the alien queen, but because it's all white and because he's a robot, it looked pretty graphic, right? With all the tubes and stuff hanging out, but it was all white, milky stuff, and he was supposed to be a robot, just like, eh, doesn't matter me. <laughs> Although Aliens was a movie I was a little hesitant to, I didn't want, I didn't want to see. Um, actually, I didn't see it in the theater because of that specific reason. I don't know. I remember a friend wanted to go with me. And I was like, and I was like, well, I got real anxious and nervous and I was stressed. I mean, literally stressed. Like, I want to go see it. I don't want to look like a, I won't use the word, but <laughs> I don't want to look like one of those people. Um, and, uh, you know, at the same time, I'm scared to death to go. It would literally cause you anxiety and stress. Um, you know, so I, I got used to the stress hormone kicking in very early on in the, in my life. Um, but uh, a lot of stress. Stress at school, stress at home, stress, stress, stress. I mean, I'm surprised they even made it out of my childhood. Um, but uh, anyways, we'll go see. Let's, well, first of all, let's take a look at the movies of 1984, and then we'll hit Fangora Magazine. So let's go to IMDb, of course. It's easiest. Um, and I guess these are in order by popularity. It says list order. Let's see. Popularity. Let's go popularity. I'm sure it's going to be still number one. Yeah, obviously number one is going to be Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, I say that because I don't want to go to the listing. I just want to... I guess we'll just leave it there. You guys can... I mean, you guys know what these movies are. A few of them might be a little offbeat, but... Um, yeah, the number one, of course, obviously, everybody's going to go get Gaga over. It was the first Nightmare on Elm Street. And again, didn't see it in the theater. Um, ended up seeing... Yeah, wait a minute. Did I see this one in the theater with my sister? That, that's where I have a gray spot. I'd have to ask my sister. And she's not going to remember. I, If anybody, I'm going to be the one to remember. She's never going to remember. But I either saw this in the theater with my sister, or I saw it with my sister at my dad's house um, on cable. Um, I don't believe we rented it, that, and I wouldn't have seen it until after 84, probably 85, most likely 86, really. Um, so I actually saw the movie. Um, but uh, yeah, obviously that's that's probably gonna be the number one. Now I did see Gremlins, and Gremlins wasn't scary, obviously, but I did see Gremlins in the theater. I love Gremlins. Gremlins was like one of those like movies I really liked as a kid. It was still kind of kiddy, but at the same time, it was kind of like mischievous and, and you know, kind of like a kid. You know, you're a, you're an 11 year old who's kind of a little mischievous. I really like Stripe. I still need to find. I want to find. Now that I got the mask, the Fang mask, I want to get that Stripe. See if I can find one. Uh, I don't know if they're gonna reissue him or what, but he was about yay big, and he was Stripe, and he had like, you know, uh, material hair. Uh, the gremlin. I know they've they've done like the mog, you know, the mogwise, the gizmo. But I th I want to see if they've got that. If not, it probably goes for astronomical amounts of money on eBay or whatever. But I'd like to have that that uh, gremlin again. I really liked that thing. Um, it was a, I got that for my birthday in in summer of '84. So it was one of those things I really like, really enjoyed. I remember I got the, the card trading cards. Um, I had uh, the official film magazine. Uh, I like 
gremlins more than I, you know, remember liking it, to tell you the truth. Uh, but again, it wasn't really that scary of a movie. Um, Night of the Comet, uh, you know, the girl from uh, Last Starfighter. Now, The Last Starfighter came out this year, which is kind of weird, but um, I, I never saw the theater. I don't even remember seeing the, the videotape case. This would have been obviously in 85 or beyond. Um, but I don't, I don't even remember seeing this on cable. Yeah. I mean, I did not know Night of the Comet really existed until I was, you know, probably the last 10, 15, 20 years. Um, you know, people were talking about it. I think I found it just because of, I liked the girl from it who was in The Last Starfighter, played Mags, um, and she was in this movie. Other than that, I, like I said, I don't remember ever seeing this back in the 80s. Uh, Children of the Corn, I did not see in the theater. I remember when it came out. Um, my sister was all about Stephen King, and I believe that was another one I watched with my sister again in uh, at my dad's house on cable. Um, or we rented it. I think we rented it on. on I think we had the the, v, the VHS that, that by that time we because the Betamax was gone. Um, Toxic Avenger. I didn't know it existed until like whenever Batman. The Keaton Batman came out, 89. So 89 is when I discovered it. Actually, my buddy, you know, when went to Ruther with me, he was always talking about it. And I was like, I don't know. Uh, toxic what? Um, and that was the first time I saw that. It was probably 89. Now, I remember when the final chapter came out. And uh, I remember my sister going to see it. And she telling me that it wasn't super scary. You might want to go see it. It's got a young kid in it, Corey Feldman. Kind of reminds me of you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna do my my dance like the Corey film. But she says it kind of reminds me of you as this young kid in it. Um, and uh, I don't, I still don't think I saw. I think I saw it literally a year or it may have been '86 like, again on cable. I remember that. Yeah, I remember because it was '86 because '86 Halloween. I went out as Freddy Krueger or as um, Jason. And I, and I watched them all in 86. Um, and my dad told me not to. Not because of anything. He just said, you know what? Because I was, I was at his house on the weekend out in the trailer, like the creepy trailer. And he was like, uh, you know what? If you watch all these movies, you're never going to go to sleep tonight. You're going to be up all night. And you're going to be all scared. No, I'm not, Dad. I'm going to be Jason for Halloween, man. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be scared. Couldn't sleep and couldn't sleep a wink. I was up all night. Dad, I'm scared. <laughs> um, but uh, so I, I didn't see I only movie so far I've seen in the theater I may have seen Nightmare on Elm Street but it's pretty much Gremlins so far um, A Silent Night Deadly Night I remember this movie coming out um, one thing that's cool about this movie I did watch recently well like in the last few years um, is all of the toys that are in the toy store there's clearly a Castle Grayskull mint in box behind him there's, a, I think there's a G.I. Joe Sky Striker. There's so many. I, c I could care less about the movie. All I cared about was the toy, the toy store that they worked in, the guys worked in, and uh, spotting all the toys. I was like that with Chopping Mall, too. It's like, oh, no, they just, the robots totally just wiped out an entire stack of dragonflies and Sky Strikers. <laughs> um, the Company of the Wolves, I remember we did rent this on video. My sister, or a discount video where I discovered the Sega Master System. In the, in the Nintendo discount video in Lake Orion, my sister says, look, we're going to rent two movies at night. I don't know whatever I rented, and she got to rent one. And she wanted to see Company of the Wolves. I always thought it was crazy with the wolf face coming out of the guy's mouth on the cover. I fell asleep during the middle. I got so boring to me. My sister loved vampire and, and werewolf movies. It's a chick thing. Um, I, I couldn't, I don't really like vampire or werewolf stuff at all. Uh, I werewolf stuff I can sort of tolerate, but vampires no. Um, and uh, yeah, so anyways, I she rented that number. I fell asleep in it. Uh, Chud, cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers. Remember when it came? I remember when all of these came out. I remember all the movie posters. Didn't see this in the theater. Um, I saw this with my Ruther buddy. We were, we watched it on. Um, we rented it uh, in. I want to say the summer out of eighth grade, summer out of Ruther, right before we started high school. Um, 
fire starter. Didn't really understand what it was. Um, but I, I didn't see that until I uh, watched it on cable years later. Uh, the initiation, don't even know what that is. Razorback. I remember seeing the video cassette box for this. I don't think I've ever seen this. Uh, Monster Dog. I don't think I've seen that. Uh, Boogie Creek. At the legend continues. Wasn't there one called Return to Boogie Creek? Or is that this one? The legend continues. Uh, one of these I ended up... It says 83. But one of these I ended up seeing on uh, cable. You know, late night Cinemax. Skinemax. Um, Silent Madness. I don't doesn't ring a bell. I don't think I've seen it. Superstition. Look cool cover. Don't don't even re remember this. I don't remember these two at all. Like they don't even ring a bell. Uh, Invitation to Hell doesn't ring a bell. The Prey. You would think I would remember an axe into something as a kid, especially in 1984. But doesn't ring a bell. Um, don't open till Christmas. I don't remember that cover, but I remember the title. Um, it's funny. I'm I'm showing you all the best movies of '84. I've seen none of them, <laughs> and I didn't see any of them except for Gremlins in 1984. Uh, Scream for Help, nope. Uh, Strangler vs. Strangler, nope. Splatter University, nope. The Bog, nope. Uh, Terror in the Isles, nope. I tell you, I'm not really a real horror fan. Uh, Satan's Blade, nope. Sea Serpent, nope. Uh, Piranha, I saw Piranha, first one, on cable. Uh, Innocent Prey, no. Deadly Intruder, no. And whatever this is, Yansar, whatever this is. Uh, never saw this either. Um, I recently, I was looking for all the, uh, all the, the spring break movies. From, uh, spring break and beach movies of of the 80s couldn't find them all there's one i'm specifically i'm looking for and i can't think of i can't find it but i'd have to watch them all and tell you which one it is uh there's uh what do you call it shocktober blood too um anyways so those are the movies supposedly the best movies the top whatever or maybe it's all of them and they just put them in order by popularity 30 move 30 horror movies of 1984 and as you can see just like everything else you seem to be hitting on 84 is how many iconic things came out of that year. Nightmare on Elm Street, Gremlins, Children of the Corn, Friday the 13th, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Toxic Avenger, Night of the Comet, Company of Wolves, Chud, Firestarter. I mean, it's a lot of movies there. All right, let's switch gears here and let's kick over and look at some, some icky stuff. So I'm going to try to, a spoiler alert, these these images may contain graphic violence um and gore uh it's called fangoria so just be prepared for that i mean i don't know if it's going to get get demonet or I, i'm not even monetized but i don't think it's going to get uh kicked uh kicked off uh or whatever flagged or whatever but um obviously it's it's, it's all fake blood. it's all fake so just catch up it's just catch up it's my uh wayne used to always say eh, it's just catch up <laughs> Um, anyways, uh, let's start out this, I think this is the first issue of 1984, obviously Christine. So let's just go through a couple of these of 1984. Now you can go to the Fangoria, you can obviously you can catch on there, get on their subscription thing, but you can go to Fangoria.com as you can see here. And this is where I'm getting this from. And you can view the archives and go through all of the old Fangoria magazines. Um, so we'll pop this one up here and go through it. Uh, I believe that is from the Keep. Yep, the Keep. Uh, I guess the Keep must have came out in '83 or '80. I, the Keep is a weird movie. It it's kind of boring, but it's a great soundtrack by Tangerine Dream. Uh, it's also got Duke Leto. I think he's it's a jerk. They're supposed to be Germans. Um, you know the guy from Das Boot who is also Duke Leto. He's like the, I think he's the main protagonist. In, I think. Um, let's see. So the other thing that this magazine had in it obviously it's related to the masks is this and i saw this as a kid and i saw those and like i said getting the green friend fang mask was awesome as a kid now i have it now it's right over there i got them 
I don't have all those foam things, so I just put them on a, a igloo uh, thermos for now because it works perfect. It's sitting on one of my speakers on my desk here. Um, but going through the, and seeing these masks, and I didn't like them all. I always thought the, the craziest ones were the best ones. The ones with the most gore and the most insanity were the coolest ones. However, I really, I think a lot of them are dumb <laughs> nowadays. That one's kind of cool. This one's kind of cool. I like this one. Um, but some of these ones are just, it's, it's too much. It just looks like, it, it's like, is this a mask? It's like, what am I wearing here? I'm like, I, it, it just doesn't, it looks so disjointed. Um, but, uh, but seeing these as a kid, it's like, oh, I want one of these. Look how much they were. Like, look at, look at this one. Let's see, Sky, or Cy, Cycron or whatever. He's $55. The double distortion, he's 70 the same price as that is now. When that was forty dollars back then, so you can tell these masks are pretty pricey. Um, just make sure this is eighty-four. I believe it is. Yeah, nineteen eighty-four. Um, and as you can see, uh, I believe it was by I believe Fangora was by monthly because it says January, March, April. Oh, so January, March was one issue. January through March, April through May, July. Through, those are the quarters. October and November. Fangoria. Oh, it says here. Duh. If I can just read. Fangoria published eight times a year. So you get January issue. You get a March issue. You get an April issue. You get a May issue, July issue, August issue, October, and November. Okay, that makes sense. Right. So it doesn't publish all 12 months, but you get them for most of the year. Uh, let's flip the page. So, uh, again, you know, it's weird. My Starlog Magazine video did okay. Dragon Magazine, nobody must know what Dragon is. I mean, really, it's like, that's why weird. How there's, I mean, that was so prevalent back then. It just, uh, and so, and how big Dungeons and Dragons were in gaming in general. I'm just surprised that there was not a lot of uh, uh, <clears throat> traffic for the, for the Dragon. Either that or just people just don't know what it is because that thumbnail sucked or whatever. I'll make a good thumbnail for this one. I need to go back and make a better Starlog thumbnail. But Starlog and Fangoria, I mean, that was like the two magazines. One was horror, one was sci-fi. Um, high sci-fi fantasy. And this one had five sci -fi. They're all kind of in the same ballpark. I spit on your grave. Uh, and some Doctor Who stuff in here. I don't, did I, yeah, I made my Doctor Who video. So um, going back to Doctor Who. Uh, what movie? Was this a specific movie? An ancient idol lures its victim into the depths of monstrous evil in this latest film venture's release. The Power? Is that the name of the movie? Uh, looks cool. Again, sometimes these movies just do not hold up, though. I'll go back and watch them. Uh, that looks like... Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Quasimodo. What's Lon Chaney? Yeah, that's Lon Chaney. Oh, it's just talking about Lon Chaney. Okay, there we go. It's just an article on Lon Chaney. Okay, so there, like I said, the keep was cool. I thought the I thought the creature was really cool. Like, like when you, it, it takes a long time to see the creature. When you finally see him. He is really shrouded in like this blue dark light, and it really kind of helps the costume. Uh, those glowing eyes, really cool. But um, I always thought he kind of reminded me of like the, the giant, the beast from from Crawl. But uh, like I said, it's kind of a boring movie because it just takes so long to get going. But the soundtrack is amazing, um, and I do like the creature. I mean, it's cool looking. Yeah, so he kind of had that look. Um, yeah, really neat looking thing. Basically, the whole premise of the movie is the Nazis discover this keep or whatever, this like dimensional keep, um, if I remember correctly. And then they uh, they send in some soldiers, they get, you know, waxed. And then uh, and then they end up, I gotta watch this again. I, I gotta go back and watch the keep again. I, I saw it, I watched it on like dvd i bought a bunch of dvds in like 2004 because they had a big sale at media play it was media play was still in business it didn't go out of business yet but media played this big sale on dvds for like five bucks a piece 
an old bin of them. And uh, Keep was one of the ones I grabbed. So I, and then I don't know where it would happen to it again. I think I might have sold it back to Media Play for like a dollar. Because <laughs> um, they, they would buy back uh, DVDs. So, like I said, I'm just going to flip through this. I'm not going to really dwell su super hard on the actual issue. It's a cool, I like that. It's a cool, uh, it's cool artwork there. Um, Viking Women and the Sea Serpent. Yeah, I remember that movie. Uh, who's that? Very Italian looking. Um, oh, she's really attractive. I don't know who that is. I, I love that, like, that Italian, that, like, 50s Italian, like, you know, New York Italian or Jersey kind of Italian with, like, the, like, the almost, like, it was, like, the, it was almost, like, Betty Page or, like, goth hair. Um, and they have, like, the you know, bitchy eyebrows, the big bullet bra and stuff, and then the crazy accent. Like, uh, De Debbie Mazar, she always comes to mind when I think of that, that archetype or that type of chick. Uh, like this, like I said, like this New York or Jersey Italian kind of girl who has the voice um, with like almost like a gothy, they almost look goth, like a goth girl, but they're not. It's weird. It's not like they're not trying to be goth girls, but they kind of have that goth girl look to them. Um, let's see what else we got here. There's Johnny. Ha ha ha. Um, oh yeah, car trouble. So Christine, Christine came out prior to this. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good, one. I was wondering what the hell this guy was wearing in that scene where he's got like the, I don't know what it is that's on him. It's very creepy. It's like, what, is it like holding them together or something? I don't know. It's weird. Um, yeah, I mean, most of the book was black and white, but then you get some color pages. Uh, Texas Chainsaw and Nostalgia and Splatter. Why does that look familiar? Is that from... Here again, Splatter, yeah. Like a punky horror movie? I, I don't know if I've ever seen that. Uh, it reunites the stars of Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a new thriller, huh? I thought of, I think of like Liquid Sky when I see that. Um, the Intruder Within, oh, so it's a make, un, un, so, Here's the thing. I mean, this Fangora, they had a lot of this stuff. And I would see this stuff as a kid, specifically in 84, you know, that around, around that time. And I'd, I'd see them make, making the creatures, like, especially when I'd see them, like, make the maquettes and stuff like that. I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that. Because, you know, I was all into art. And it's just like, I really want to do that. I wanna, that's what I want to do for, my, for a living. I remember in high school, I went to the career center. One of our things is we had, they had to send us all down. To the, they had like appointments. And we had to go down to the career center, and we had to find. Um, we had to look up a career that we're looking for. Then we had to kind of follow a track, a path, meaning what we should be studying, and what we should be focusing on, and then what where college we could go to, and what kind of companies you can work for, right? And I walked down there, and uh, the first thing I said to him was. Um, I said, I wanted to be a, a, a special effects and movie creator. And they go, what? And they go, yeah, somebody makes like the special effects in the movie. And then I remember this older woman who worked there. And she's like, I, I don't have any idea what you'd have to do to, to do that. Um, and I go, huh. So she, she, get, she kind of started me to look. And it's like, I couldn't. With these like Amigas that we went in to use, these touchscreen Amigas, which are like super cutting edge technology and they made a big deal it's like in a special room and they made a big deal to use these things and i go in there and it kind of give you like a it's almost like what you get at like a michigan works which is like a job you know like a uh, an employment uh, service where they go through and it's like you know you put in all your you answer a bunch of questions and it gives you like the best results what you should be doing and asks all these questions and uh, i put in just crazy answers and it came up with really weird stuff for me um, but one of the things it did come up with it said, you know, artist, it said, uh, you know, should look into advertising. Everything was about advertising. You should really look into advertising and, and, and advertising art because that's all commercial art and advertising. That's what it was. And I'm like, okay. Um, and I remember walking back out and says, is this commercial art and advertising? She goes, oh. She goes, well, let's look up what's, what colleges you need to go for that. And that we, we discovered CCS in Detroit. 
uh, which is pretty famous, and uh, the University of Rhode Island, um, and these art schools and stuff. And it's just like, I remember the, the lady goes, I think those are really, really expensive to go to. Um, and they were, they were like astronomically priced to go to these. And it's just like, I, this poor kid from the trailer park, I don't care how many uh, scholarships or any financial aid you're going to get me. I don't think they're going to pay me to go live out of state at uh, and go to some prestigious uh, art college. You know, maybe they would. Um, you know, I never tried. That's a lot of things I never did. I never tried. Actually, I've tried a lot of things in life, failed, and I've not tried a lot of other things in life, so I couldn't tell you if I failed or not. But anyways, um, that was one of the things. So then I, I said, well, what about comic book artist? That was the other thing I wanted. I said, what about a comic book artist? And again, same blank stare from the people. They, they had no clue. They're like, I, I, don't, I don't know where you'd go for any of that stuff. I'm like, neither do I. That's why I'm asking you, people who are supposed to educate me. Um, but, uh, you know, it's funny, it's like you hear all these people, it's, obviously people live in California, and they've got parents, you know, that buy cocaine from the, you know, the producers of Hollywood people, you know, or whatever. And uh, it's like, you know, oh, I got into creature creating, because my, you know, it's just like, I never had any of those. It's like, yeah, I live in Michigan, although I lived right down the street from a filmmaker who helped work on Evil Dead, but he didn't like me. Um, cause I kicked his son in the nuts once <laughs> and, uh, their families didn't like me in general. They didn't like my mom. They didn't like, oh, I hated my grandma. I think that's probably the catalyst was, remember that's telling you about that, that studio where they did all the mixing where Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi and stuff used to go out into that, uh, shed, you know, back there, that garage do of that studio. You know, my grandma called calling the cops on him because she didn't, she hated, she hated him. Um, and she didn't want, uh, him. You know, getting away with, uh, he thought she was renting the place out as an apartment. She kept calling the cops, and he kept getting in trouble, because he actually wasn't supposed to have it converted into a thing. So, that's why he hated my, that, that family did not like my family at all. Um, ironically, they moved, they moved out of that area, and they bought a huge monster house right next door to the kid I'm talking about, from Winter Ruther, who also had a monster house there on the, out, you know, on the outskirts of town. It's kind of weird. Anyways, um, yeah, so, uh, or was I, where was I going with this? I don't know. I'm just bitching and complaining because things didn't turn out the way they did in life. I blame everybody else but myself. Anyways, uh, so yeah, uh, uh, crazy scenes and stuff. So yeah, you get all these different scenes and stuff. And like I said, this one's a pretty tame one. I mean, there's like a little bit of cr craziness. It's like painting on the blood. But, you know, some of these magazines, yeah, there it is. Okay, that's not, it, it, it's it's in a big two-page spread um, as far as the uh, the magazine where I first saw it. But that's the movie. What's the movie? Spinal Column in Place, another French executed work is ready for the cameras. What's the movie, though? The French movie. Uh, if you guys know, if anybody knows what that movie is, Professional Makeup, Confango Discovery, blah, blah. I guess if I read the article, it would probably tell me, but it's of a Chud victim. Oh, Chud victim. That was from Chud? No. That's from Chud? I don't remember that scene in Chud. I don't know. I haven't seen Chud in a while. Maybe it is from Chud. But anyways, that's... Uh, that was the scene. I was like, I opened him like, oh my god! Good thing we're having lasagna tonight. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. It's just, all this stuff just kind of just, you know. Uh, to an 11-year-old kid, I mean, my son, I don't know how big he is into horror now, but my son is huge. It was you know, He loves his horror and stuff. You know, it's just like me as a kid. I'm a heavy metal, horror, all that science fiction, fantasy, all of that stuff all spoke to me just because it was such a escape. And like I said, there's, you know, it's thrilling and all of that stuff was just fun, you know, and it seemed to piss off adults that you were into the stuff too. And I was always about pissing off adults. Um, so it was kind of a fun thing to be into back then. Uh, let's, let's look... How much time we get? Let's go through another classic one. Let's hit up. Uh, let's hit up the Gremlins one. Yeah, I want that 
stripe. The stripe is cool. All right, let's go full screen. Oh, there's Mr. Barlow. Where's the... Okay, let me go a little back here. There it is, full screen. Okay. Mr. Barlow. Um, Blue Rock Mags and posters. Anyways. Uh, there's Jason. Um, sorry about all the silence here. I'm just going to look at Oh, Cloak and Dagger. Cloak and Dagger is in this? Why would Cloak and Dagger be in Fangora Magazine? That's weird. I love Cloak and Dagger. <laughs> that was a great movie. Uh, it, you know, I had the kid from E.T. in it. It had Dabney Coleman in it. I don't know if that makes a big deal. But anyways, but there was a game, too, Cloak and Dagger from TSR. And, uh, but it was more supposed to be this Atari game called Cloak and Dagger the kid was playing. And I don't think a Cloak and Dagger Atari game actually came out. But yeah, twelve-year-old, you know, Henry Thomas. He's he was my age pretty much at that time. So, you know, it's weird. You know, it's it's funny now that I think about it. It's like I I, I kept saying about like how I think that when they try to take movies and they put like the main character, the hero, and they like try to make them relatable to a kid. <sighs> Certain movies were okay in that regard, and I think when movies like E.T this movie, um, there are certain movies, you know, Never Ending Story, where the kid is about your age, and, you know, you kind of, you know, if you can relate, especially if the kid was picked on, or the kid was marginalized in some way, you could relate with the kid. Um, it's funny, what, what about the people who, who used to do all the picking and never got uh, picked on? I wonder, how, can they, can they, did they, uh, can they relate with marginalized kids? Anyways, um, but, uh, but at the flip side of it, I didn't really like that. And I, I, I've said this before in other videos, but it's just like, I like my heroes to be what I want to be. An adult, because I'm in control of my life, and I don't have to go to school, even though i got to work. But, <laughs> um, or I could just go on adventures like adults do on TV and movies and stuff, and they never seem like they work, or go to the bathroom. Anyways, uh, I, uh, you know, I wanted to be an adult. I wanted to be, you know, some good-looking guy or some, you know, big muscle guy like Rocky or, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, yada, yada, yada. You wanted to be something that you are not because you felt limited being the person you are. And you wanted to be able to transcend yourself and live vicariously through, you know, your idealized version of yourself. That's what I think appeals to kids. You know, I don't think... You know, I guess you can, yes, you can like the kid who's, if you're a marginalized kid, you can, you can identify with the kid who's marginalized with you. Um, in a, in that regard, I guess that's inclusive and, you know, inclusivity or whatever it is. Um, because there's a lot of kids, obviously, that are marginalized. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a trope or it's a, uh, an archetype that a lot of young kids can identify with. And that's fine. However... What really resonated with me, and I think what really resonates with kids, is being able to... That's why I think, like, you know, what do you call it? Shazam was a big character for kids. I mean, you can, margin, you can identify with the kid because you're roughly the same age, but he transforms into this big, you know, super-powered adult. And that's, you know, your child fantasy, you know, is to become the, this adult that's in charge. You know, the movie Big. I mean, all of these movies are kind of tap into the nerve. I think a lot of modern day writers have forgotten that. And I know kids have changed, but I think I think at the core, some of that stuff about kids I think is still there. And I th and I think they're they're missing the boat nowadays with uh, with movies and stuff. You know now now they want to they want to include you know they want to include obviously you know various races, various sexual orientations, which I think that stuff's getting out of control. I mean I'm not going to go get on a soapbox about, you know, the whole woke culture, but, uh, I, you know, personally, I don't see it that much. And even with my son, I, I ask him and he says, no, it's not, it's not really, not really like that at school. Um, but uh, we, we do live, we don't live, you know, we live where hillbillies live. So, of course, you know, it's going to be a little different out here anyways. But I'm sure if you lived in some of the more affluent areas, especially if it's, you know, your big cities, especially very liberal cities, I can see that being an issue. Um, but I don't, I don't really, I don't, personally, I don't deal with it on a daily basis with myself at all, really. I mean, outside of 
seeing it in TV and movies and stuff and kind of being like, eh, you know, but, um, but I do think it's all stuff's getting kind of silly, um, at the end of the day. I'm not going to go off on it like some people like to do for it to be hyperbolic about it, you know, but I'm just going to say that, uh, I just find it silly and it's just my opinion. That's about as far as my opinion goes on it. Just makes me roll my eyes. That's all. I just... It's about that's about the extent of my my uh, anger. Oh, so we, oh, we, sorry, we got Friday the Thirteenth here. Um, so yeah, we got some Friday the Thirteenth action here. Uh, the pit and the pet. I was thinking of pit and the pet. Um, but yeah, like I said. <laughs> yeah, see scenes like this, like you you open up, oh, there's a guy with his head cut off, oh, there's a chick with her head broken off, ah! Um, you know, as a kid you'd see, oh, this guy's splitting too, it's like you want, it's like I said, it was a challenge to yourself. You're like, I want to go and look at that magazine, I know it's going to spook me out, or it's going to, it didn't really gross me out, it's not like, you know, like you open up, oh, I just have thrown up all over the magazine, and that's, that never happened. You would just, you would look at it, and you go, you just get disturbed, like, I can't look at that anymore. And then you'd think about it. Get on your bike. Get on your little BMX bike. We're doing the whole Stranger Things thing, you know. Riding home on your bike going, Oh, I can't get that scene out of my head. Um, oh, this, okay, this is a creep. I remember hearing, like, a, I listened to Art Bell, Late Night with Art Bell, uh, and them talking about the Philadelphia Experiment. I, I never saw the movie then, but the whole, they're talking about, you know, oh, yeah, the people who are all, uh, what do you call it, um, you know, they, they went through this dimensional thing and then they all got, like, fused the hull of the ship. That's, this, just this scene in that movie was freaky enough. The rest of the movie is not really freaky. But, uh, but this scene was always, like, really kind of spooky. Like, that's really spooky. That was disturbing to me. As, even, you know, as an adult. It's like, what do you mean they're, they're fused? Yeah, it's like, they're fused, like, stuck between dimensions and they, like, got fused with the with the ship. It's like, oh, that is, that's really creepy. Um, that stuff's disturbing to me. It's still disturbing to me thinking about it. Um, Wes Craven, oh, the hills have eyes. Uh, you know, I saw it like once on cable and it didn't really appeal to me, so I couldn't even tell you much about uh, the hills have eyes. Um, oh, yeah, there's a scene from Gr it's Gremlins. Yeah, here we go. Here's Gremlins. Uh, Corey Feldman on that, too. Um, I always thought he was a cartoonist. It's like, that's the other thing was kind of cool. I want to be a cartoonist. There's Stripe. Got some Phoebe Cates in there. What's not to like about this movie? Um, Splatter University. I don't remember seeing that one. Oh, that's, wasn't that the one that was on the, the list? On IMDb, I can't remember. Um, I want my MTV. <laughs> Jason screams to shout. Uh, oh, there's that Feldman there. That's, that's from that movie. Um, yeah. So, like I said, Fangorum was was one of those magazines, like some pre-internet days, where you would just go and you would sit down at the magazine. It seems like there's a lot of blood. That with all the blood in the Wrestling Illustrated magazine. A lot of blood at the, at the magazine counter back in the day. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I used to love going to see, or, you know, doing all this stuff. How do I get back here? How do I get out of full screen? <laughs> oh, it's up here. Um, how much time does that get? Eh, I'll probably edit here. I was going to go through uh, the V12. I think they got scenes from Silent Night, Deadly Night in there as well. Um, but yeah, go ahead at your leisure. Go and peruse these. Uh, like I said, just go to Fangora.com. You can type this in here. Fangora.com backslash archives. And it'll take you to the magazine archives. And you can go through and look at these till your heart's content. Pretty much they got all of them, I believe, on there. The entire publication history. I don't... I'm pretty sure it's not... It might have came back. Did it come back? I'm just going to see real quick. Did it come back? Reading down the archives. Shop. It's in the shop. 
subscribe now. Uh, maybe it did come back. It's probably just P. I don't think it's. Uh, is it print? No, maybe it did come back as print. Subscribe now. It looks like it's it's come back, huh? So it's a thing now, right? So go check it out. Go check out. They need or people need to start giving me money here for uh, recommending stuff. But um, yeah. So I guess Fangoria's uh, has come back on the shelves. So it's a thing. It's still a magazine. But again, with the internet and whatnot. I mean, it's kind of pointless for magazines now. I mean, unless you just like magazines. I love magazines. I mean, anything that's photo. You no, know, everything I just I look at the pictures. I, mean, I just love that. I don't like to read, but I like to sit and look at pictures because I'm an idiot. So, you know, I'm a visual person because I do art. And, uh, you know, to me, it's just, I just like looking at the stuff. Um, so, yeah. So, I guess my overall thing is. My take on horror is uh, I'm not really a horror fan. In the in, I'm not like a diehard horror fan. Um, even when I like today, I, for one thing, I do not like like torture porn. I can't stand torture porn like Saw and Hostels. I can't stand those movies. I don't want to see that. Um, I know it's fake. It's not scary to me. I just don't care to see it. I just like I don't I don't get off watching people get tortured because I'm not insane. Um, you know, the, 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 I don't mind the, the killer thing. I think that's a little more interesting. But like I said, I don't like a talky killer. You know, uh, you know, I think that's like, like if you're taking real serial killers like Jeffrey Dahmer and um, Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy's all charismatic, you know, and uh, it's like, I don't like talky, I don't like charismatic talky killers. I like monsters. And, you know, Dahmer's more of a monster. You know, I'm talking about real life horror here. Um, he's a more of a monster. I mean, he did talk, obviously, and he had a personality, but he was not much of one. Um, but I like when it comes down to like my, you know, my psychopathic killers going after a bunch of hot young teenagers. I think, again, I said this again. I, I like um, the monster that doesn't talk. It, it can't reason with it. It can't be. You know, it's like the alien. You know, it's a killing machine that doesn't stop. And you've got to somehow get away from it or destroy it, right? You got two options: get away from it or destroy it. Um, you know, and you kind of have to you have to you know figure that out, and you know, and not get killed or or mutilated at the same time, or maybe you know not see your friends all mutilated and hurt. I like that concept. I think that's like it's done been done to death. I don't think they need to keep doing it, but at the time, I think it was a, a neat concept. Um, you know, even the just, I mean, it all comes back to Halloween and Alien. I mean, it's essentially that, where you get the thing, um, you know, if it's science fiction related, I think it's cool, because I like science fiction better than, like, horror horror anyway, so you got that going on. Um, you know, I think sometimes the monster stuff looks cool, you know, I think sometimes it looks neat, sometimes I think it just looks stupid, uh. I don't know. I, I, I don't go out of my way to see horror movies. My son, you know, we watched, like, whatever that one is, that clown, I can't remember what it's called. Um, we watched those. They're okay. Uh, they just seem to just be ripping off the stuff from the 80s, but um, they're all right. Um, but, yeah, you know, I don't even know if I really like movies anymore, to tell you the truth. Uh, I, I mean, There's nothing I really care to see. I don't get excited. I don't go to movies anymore. You know, I said so my last movie I saw in the theater was the Dungeons and Dragons movie and that was my son's last birthday like it was 11 year old birthday so a year ago um, yeah I don't uh, I don't get to the movie very often um, and neither does my son we just you know if I want to watch a movie I'll just watch I got a big TV that I can hit pause so when I gotta go pee out in the living room so I, I liked my uh, I like my big TV or, you know, and sit and watch movies and watch comfort my own home. Um, you know, but again, I, I don't really, I was, I've been watching some Doctor Who, uh, but I, I can't watch, uh, can't sit there and watch a lot of movies anymore. I just, just don't, I just not, I can't say that I can't get through it because I just watched, you know, one of those Doctor Who 
episodes with all the different parts. It was like two hours long, two and a half hours long. So it's not like a, a length thing, like an attention span. Um, I just, uh, I don't know, I just don't really care to see a lot of movies anymore. They're okay. You know, I, I again, like, movies like, oh, they're visually spectacular. Yeah, but every time somebody says that, it never like appeals to me. It's like doesn't. It, it's like yeah, it's, it might be visually spectacular, but none of it speaks to me in the movie. And again, I don't really have to have a great storyline. Like I said, I'm not much of a reader. I'm not much of a person. On, I don't have to be you know the second coming when it comes to the the re you know it doesn't have to be Shakespeare. But at the same time, I mean, I like things to not be dumb. Or if it's dumb, I like the dumb to be. Um, you know, uh, just appealing, but again, it's just like, I, I liked it to press my buttons. What I like to see at this age at 50 years old, you know, sure, I still like seeing a hot chick in a movie. It's still always, it still seems to be very appealing to me. Um, you know, I like a little bit of a twist. I like sometimes a little bit of a something going on makes you think, I don't know. It's just, Everything I watch nowadays, and again, that's a lot because of the movie, type of movies that are coming out, but um, I think the last horror movie I watched was the, what was the movie with the little girl, the doll? <laughs> was it called uh, Megan? Yeah, I saw that Megan movie. Um, I watched that, I was like, eh, it's entertaining. Um, okay, you know. I, and I watched some movies with my son, it's like, yeah, it's entertaining. I don't think there's anything currently on TV right now on streaming dying to see. I watched the He-Man thing, obviously, but, um, I don't know. I guess I'm sitting here and babble about how much I don't like movies anymore, but, um, uh, yeah, what do you think? I mean, tell me what you think. Do you still go to movies? Do you still have a passion for movies? Um, you know, or you watch the oil nostalgia for old stuff? You know, what's your take on modern movies? I mean, when we're talking about you know, movies from 40 years ago, which is a pretty long time, um, you know, if it was 1984 and 40 years back, we'd be talking about, like, you know, silent movies, you know, or movies from, like, the 40s, uh, so that's kind of weird, you know, if it was 1944, it's just like, oh, well, we're just, the World War II is just went ending, right, what were the movies out back then, um, so things have changed quite a bit since, uh, since then, and uh, and since the 80s, eh, I guess we're still rehashing the stuff in the 80s because it was popular. Um, but uh, and what's your take on horror? Do you like horror? Do you like vampires? Do you like you know torture porn? What's your what's your 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 thing? What do you like? I guess I, I gotta say again. I'll say it once. Overall horror, not that interested in it. Um, vampires don't like them. Werewolves don't like them. Torture porn can't stand it. Uh, sci science fiction horror-ish things like aliens and stuff. Uh, that's kind of intriguing. If it's done right. Um, you know. But like the whole AI thing or the whole thing with like the Megan thing. You know. Or, or like you know the crazy uh, android girl goes crazy and stuff like that. It's kind of interesting. Um, it's entertaining. But uh you know, from there, I, I'm not really huge on it anymore. I like the stuff from the 80s just because I'm nostalgic for the time period. And this is, Fangora Magazine is probably the, the, the pinnacle of my uh, nostalgia from the 80s when it comes to horror. So, all right, I'll let you go on this one. Tell me what you think. Remember, like and subscribe. Do all that kind of psycho jazz. Um, and uh, I will see you on the next one. All right, bye-bye.